are new around here. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Missa. I'm a 28 year old beauty addict from Edinburgh, which is in Scotland. And today, as you can see by the title, I have our third and final instalment of the Norvina Palette Collection Pro Palettes Collections video. If you want to see one and two, I will link them down in the description box so you can go and check them out. I uploaded two on Friday and one I did a few weeks ago when it first launched. But this is of course the last palette that she is releasing, at least for now. I'm sure she'll probably add to this in the future because I think she really likes this kind of format obviously or she wouldn't have released three. This is what it looks like. So this one is a lovely orange with butterflies on it. Let me show you the inside. I'm going to hold it upside down because the palette keeps re the mirror keeps showing showing them in horrible pajamas when I'm trying to pretend that I'm glamorous. So this is what it looks like. Um, you've probably seen pictures of it online. Very much is the most neutral palette of the three, although there are, of course, as you can see, some very bright pops of colour. Like these two greens are like neon got this lime, bright yellow, this kind of pinky red, some oranges, but on the whole it's very neutral. I haven't actually swatched this yet so I'm very excited to jump in our swatches in a second. This is the same as the other ones, 25 eyeshadows, 68 Great British Pounds. We are being, just on a side note, absolutely shafted on the price in the UK and I think it's across Europe as well. So this is $60 which let me in fact let me find out specifically today what that is so for you americans you're paying 60 dollars which to us today is 48 pounds so if we bought this from america and took out shipping and probably customs we'd only be paying 48 pounds for this palette so you guys have you're very lucky and i'm very annoyed because it's 68 pounds for us which is probably what $78, I'm really bad at maths. If you bought it from us, it would be $83. So there's just some really weird big price discrepancy. I've not even looked into the foundation, which by the way for us is £43, which is extortionate. Anyway, I wanted to do a really autumnal, quite fiery look today. So that's what I've done. And as with all of my videos going into new palettes, I'm going to do um, swatches of the entire palette. I'm gonna then do a demo of this eye look, which is again gonna be a voiceover just because I think it works really well and it stops my videos being too long because you know Melissa will go on for an hour if she can. Talking in third person is so gross. And then at the end, I will give you my final thoughts on the palette. My skin I did in a separate Patreon only video, so Patrons that will either be already out or coming out for you probably still to come to be honest, but it will be coming for you So yeah without any further fanning around because it's been five minutes and 23 seconds since I started I'm gonna jump into swatches and then we'll move on to eyes and then final thoughts But first of all, I'm gonna have to take off this really really pretty bodysuit because the sleeves Won't roll up for that probably kids. I got a size or two too small. So Hold on, let me get naked and then I'll come back and do some swatches. How many people among you also refuse to believe that you've put on weight and are just in pure denial? So keep buying clothes that you're definitely gonna be too big for. Anyway, let's jump into swatches. As always, down the side of my arm, I'm not gonna build them up and try and make them look beautiful while I swatch them for you. Although if they swatch badly, which I'm not sure if they will or not, part one didn't, part two didn't swatch that well. Then I will build them up just to show you what a really good swatch will look like of them. So we'll just go row by row. So first up we have A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. They really know how to make an orange, an orange matte, honestly. Like, the last, in volume two, the orange was like the best colour, and this is no different. Our first metallic, B1, B2, B3, 
Oh, that's a shame. Bet this was watch nice. B4, yeah, pretty nice. And B5. We'll fit on the next row. We've got C1, C2, matte red, C3, C4, and C5. So that is the first three rolls. I'm already way more interested in this just from looking at the swatches than I was in volume two. I thought volume two it was a really weird colour story. I didn't love it at all. But this, I don't know, I'm just so into it. It's way nicer in my opinion. And I'm usually like the girl that only goes for colour. I'm going to dim the lights in a second. That's it. Just there. But let me dim it because you need to see it better. Again, that is the first three rows of the palette. Shaky arms aren't so shaky today because I've had something to eat. What do you think of them? I'm going to dim it one more time just to be safe. There you go, you're probably seeing them pretty true to life. I should hope. Anyway. I just want to build up B3. This pink one. It's a really pretty shade. Sw didn't swatch very well, but it does build up. How do you like them apples? I was rather disappointed actually on ABH's stories on Instagram. They pre-swatched the palette, but then swatched the palette as if they were swatching it just organically, but they clearly went over some shades two or three times. I was like, mm. People don't like when you are like live swatching and you've pre-swatched, like what is the point in that? I don't get it. Moving on to our last two rolls then. We're gonna start off with D1, D2, D3, D4, I don't like that colour at all. <laughs> and then D5. These two are very similar, D2 and D5. I don't feel like they both needed to be in the palette and I much prefer D5. And um, that's just my personal preference. Okay, last row. We've got E1, E2, E3, oh gosh, it's like chunks falling from that one above it into that orange. I might make that look nicer afterwards. I need to show you how messy this palette gets when you swatch it. E4 and E5. My whole desk is just covered in eyeshadow. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you how messy this gets. You see like all the chunks. Right, since the screen's already dark, I'll just show you them up close. That's the bottom two rows. Probably, I don't think they look very nice like this. If this was a palette on its own, I'd be like, yuck, that's disgusting, take it away from me. But in the context of the whole palette, I do think they really work. But, sorry, these two shades, whilst they are different, they're so similar that I don't think they both need to be in the palette. Just turn up the lights a pinch. There you go. I'm just gonna build up E3, just this orange one. So yeah, that's the bottom two rows. Just a few observations now. I've played with all three palettes and swatched them all and also just a couple about this one. The first palette and this palette have a lot more fallout than volume two. I feel like that's just because the shadows are not as firmly pressed, but it also means that the mattes come out a bit more pigmented and they're a bit softer, nicer to work with. 
Um, this palette does not have any mattes that are secret shimmers, so none of the mattes in here have little sparkles in them. And I think that's the only two observations I had, but I sounded like I had three, didn't I? That is just fallout from my desk. Just from my desk. I know personally that a lot of people do buy palettes according to what the swatches look like. I don't, but if I do see terrible swatches, probably it lodges itself in there subconsciously like, I probably, that's not probably a good palette, don't get it. But I feel like this one's swatched pretty darn well, especially when I compare it to what, two days ago when I swatched volume two, I wasn't that impressed. But I, they weren't terrible, they just, I just wasn't that impressed. Oh, that was my third observation. Mm. The shimmers. The shimmers in all three palettes are very different to the shimmers in their older palettes. They, these feel more dry. They feel more sheer and they're not quite as boom in your face. Um, I wonder if I can get an example just to kind of test my theory, I'm going to grab B1 from this palette, and I know they're different tones, but it's just a quick scientific test. And I'm going to grab this shade here called Seychelles from the Riviera. I have thought that all the way along, like their, their shimmers in these palettes aren't quite as nice as the shimmers ABH usually do. I always hit pan on ABH's shimmers really quickly because they are so moist you heard me right that they feel wet and i've always really loved that um anyway this is b1 i mean that's a pretty nice swatch that's a really nice swatch it's quite chunky <laughs> but it's got pigment and uh this is seychelles it's obviously yeah different tones and you're not going to see it from there or even if i take this closer Again, that's quite chunky. This one feels a lot more wet, the Seychelles one. You can really see that, like, it's almost, it's not bouncy at all, but it really kind of molds to, like, when you swatch it, I don't know how to speak. All of that to say, the shimmers are definitely differently formulated, I feel, in these palettes than in their more traditional like rectangle palettes all are pretty nice um but i do feel like their older metallics are a nicer formula to work with and you have to put in less effort with them i don't know though if you have these palettes compared to their older palettes have you noticed a difference in the metallics or do you think i am crazy or nitpicky i am probably both Anyway, one has yimmered and yammered on far too long. I'm gonna quit my fannying around and if you wanna see how I got this eye look and then hear my thoughts on whether or not you should spend a lot, a lot of money on an eyeshadow palette, then please just do keep on watching. Let's jump in then. Oh, my voice is disappearing. Probably cause it's the next morning and I still haven't slept, it's after 9 a.m not been to sleep yet. So I'm using my Revlon Candid Concealer. I use this 99% of the time as my primer. I love it, it's great. Trust me, that's all I'm gonna say about that. So my brushes will be on screen and the first shade I'm going in with is E2. This is kind of going to be my like mapping shade. I'm not that great at doing these like winged out looks just off the cuff. I'm much better when I use sellotape, but I didn't want to. So I'm just, I'm not trying right now to make this look super pigmented. So it's going to look a little bit patchy and not that great, but I'm just mapping out my shape so that I know what I'm doing, if you know what I mean. I'm going to pack it on here just because I wanted to see how deep it would get. It's pretty deep. I do feel like this palette would have done really well to have a black in it, but there we go. We can't have everything we want. And there was a black in the previous two volumes anyway, so yeah, would have been people would have complained if there was three black shadows and three palettes, but yeah, 
So I'm just wiggling my brush around and then using a Luxie brush. It's a really nice brush. The only problem is it's a mini handle and I absolutely hate that. And I just picked up a tiny bit more of E2 and I'm just gonna wiggle this on all around just to soften up the edges a bit. I'm a bit wary of this shade after playing with volume two and getting a very harsh line and being unable to blend it. So yeah, you can see me looking at you there, but that's more because, gosh, this looks terrible at this point, doesn't it? So C2 now, and I'm just showing you how well this picks up on the brush. This is probably the best red, best matte red I've ever used. To be fair though, I never wear matte red. This is the most red I've ever worn. And it's a little bit scary to me, red eyeshadow. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm just gonna pack this on and start kind of dragging it out and making my shape a bit better. But I will say, there's something probably to do with the colour wheel with this red eyeshadow and the kind of shades I've used today make my eyes look so blue, I think. Love my autofocus. Also, Hamish says that I've got green eyes and I'm sure I've got blue eyes. This is just a cheap little unnamed brush. I think it's MSQ, to be honest, but I can't remember. Got it on eBay or Amazon a very long time ago. And I'm just using this again, just to help with my shape. Like I said, I'm not that great at it. It kind of scares me doing winged out looks on camera. I can do them off camera fine, but on camera, the pressure is a bit more. So I'm just keeping packing on that C2 shade, the matte red, wow. Like, I was tapping it off in between applying it because I was really worried about applying too much, but gosh, it's so pigmented. Right, I also forgot the name of this brush. This is a Jessup brush. It comes in their, like, 15 set, 15 pounds to get 15 brushes. I'm just using this to blend out the edges. First time I'd used this brush as well. Made it all red and dirty and stained. A2, ABH know how to do oranges so well, so well, sorry. Again, I'm going in with a little bit of trepidation with this shade because I don't want to put on too, too much. So I am tapping off the excess in between, but I mean, it's a, re it's a really vibrant shade. I'm wondering now why I didn't use A5 at any point but anyway it's going on really well and I would say the red and this orange aren't at all patchy even though at this point I'm still just realistically making my shape and getting my kind of bones of my look and then you'll see as I go on I kind of deepen it up oh E4 you can even see on the palette there how messy it was and how the shadow is like flying off my face and the brush here ABH don't seem to be that good at doing yellows, not gonna lie. I probably spent about five solid minutes dipping into the yellow, applying it, dipping in, applying it, dipping in, applying it. I'm not a professional. I probably blend too much. Stacey Marie MUA did say something about you shouldn't blend too much because there's only so, so much you can actually blend a shade. So I'm still learning every day that I put on makeup. But yeah, I did spend a lot of time on that. And now I'm gonna go back in and kind of build up my dark to lights again, although I am gonna deepen it up one more time after this. I just, I did so many steps in this particular palette because on the other eye, I'd played with so many different shades and I could not for the life of me remember what order I used them in what exact shades I used. So I was kind of having to make it up as I went along again. And you can, you can tell because of how long I spend and how much I go back to a shade and reapply it and stuff. Hey, that's part of the fun, isn't it? I'm 
I wanted to keep playing with more shades, so I'm going in with E3. It looks a little bit pink on screen, but in person it's more of a light peachy orange. It's a really nice shade and I just, like I said, wanted to use as many as possible and thought this would blend into the yellow really nicely. The yellow's pretty much disappeared at this point. Wiggle, 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 E4, E4 again. For those of you that like the brushes I recommend, get the Morphe M514. I do not think you'll be disappointed. I love this brush. It's another one that I've got absolute multiples of because I always want to have a clean one. So now I'm going back in with E2 and I'm really going to focus on packing this on and building it up above in my crease on my outer corner. This again, it's a deeper shade in the palette and like I said, the palette really could have done with the black but again, I understand why they didn't put one in. I think when you're working with like sunset -y shades, it's really nice to have a black. But I mean, I can just use a single black shadow with it but... I mean, this shade impressed me quite a lot compared to Volume 2, which is a very similar tone, the one I used. This one blended a lot better. So going back in with C2, which is the red. Again, just loving my autofocus. I get it to refocus by making my eyes look really weird and open and crazy. I think you can probably see this is already blending better than volume 2 did in terms of this like deep shade that I'm using. And I was a bit worried when I first put it on my other eye but when I realised I could blend out I was happy. Oh B3, I really wanted to use this shade just because in the pan it's so pretty. It's a really like raspberry toned red, it's so nice. And again, flippy flopping it around, you know the drill. I need to stop saying you know the drill and incredible. I really overuse those sentences. Words. <laughs> I have not been to sleep, I'm delirious. E4. Which if you are not from Britain, we have E4 is a television station. There is a fact for you. Now in with A2. Just again, making sure I've got a really nice blend between my really dark shades up to my lightest shades that I'm using. And on my other eye, I dragged it out to the end of my eyebrow, so I'm just making sure I've done that as well on this side. Still struggling a pinch, you can probably see with a harsh line, but I, I do feel like it eventually disappears, especially when I'm now going with C2 and E2 on my little Luxie brush. I just dipped into both of them a few times and they just they just seem to work, although I'm pretty sure I go in with an orange after this again. <laughs> When people could use two shades to do something, I tend to use 400 for some reason. No, I don't. I'm just going to my UH eye primer and I'm going to cut my crease. And I'm going to come back with my crease cut. Yay. Rolling my eyes because it takes me about an hour. So now I'm going to use a little flat brush in the shade E4. I didn't really register until this point that I was using all mattes. I am which is weird for me so when it initially hits the eye primer you can probably see around the edges it deepens and darkens so you have to if you're going to do this spend quite a bit of time packing it on all over the eyeshadow primer and then repacking it on top because it lightens up when you put a second layer on and I'm using a smaller brush just to get around all the edges. This took me genuinely eight minutes. I looked at my camera recording. It was eight minutes to put this yellow all over my cut crease. It was so stressful. So I went off screen to finish it. And now I'm gonna work on my outer corner, which again, I'm winging because I have no idea what I did on the other eye. So, but I, I know I'd used my deeper shade first. So 
E2, I think it was. Packing that on with my M507, another great brush. Thank you to whoever recommended it to me. It's fabulous. And a much easier time blending out this color scheme as well than volume two. Um, in with E3 now. Again, no idea what I did on the other eye, so I was just making it up. That's what I do all the time. Yeah, it's a great brush. Really small and precise. I really like it. I'm more patting these shades on because again, it is a pressed pigment palette, so they do tend to work better when you press them on as opposed to swiping. And in with A2, which is orange. Orange and Saft. Pretty sure that's German. Don't know. I used to be able to say chocolate cake. Can't anymore. I'm sure I've got a few German viewers. Yeah, look at me, don't know what I'm doing. C2. Bright matte red. Why didn't I go in with any of those other purples? Oh, well, I wanted to keep it really red. I kind of committed to the red at this point. Why not? I just think this look would have been better if it had a black. I'm still thinking that. I'm gonna go back in with a bit of V2 as well. Re-put re that on the outside corner. Why not? YOLO! Really sorry about that. I was watching airplane crash investigations over to my left, your right. So that's why I keep glancing over there. Horrifying considering I'm potentially flying to Bermuda in December. Shouldn't really be watching this, but. Oh, I can hear the builders starting. Please don't start until I'm finished this. I clearly went in with a little bit of orange here, but forgot to put the picture up on screen. Anyway, this is the eyes. Before I wanted to jazz them up, I'm obviously going to add on a little bit of black eyeliner to make my lashes look better and a little bit of glitter because I feel like my cut crease looks really awful basically <laughs> without this glitter so I'm using Urban Decay Midnight Cowboy it's beautiful and gold and red and yellows all go together so well so I did it off camera and now I'm just kind of going over it to to show you what I did because that's really helpful but this is another thing I need to have a lot of concentration for because I've got really wobbly hands. <laughs> oh, so quirky. Sticking out my tongue. Giving you the poses. Got a little bit of fallout, but not too much at all. Lovely sunset eyelashes. So I'm going to run away, do my face, come back and we'll do our lower lash line. Bum, bum, ba, -dum. Milani Stay Put. I think this is called um, Stay On Slate or something. It's the slate one. I thought it was black when I picked it out of my drawer, but it's not, it's deep grey. But I feel like it gives the, the same effect overall, and these Milani eyeliners are bomb. Trust me. And then I'm gonna pop C2 all the way along my lower lash line. Please bear in mind, my lower lash line is completely baked and set and dry. And look how beautifully this matte red is packing on. It's just, it's wow, it's just there, boom, in your face, matte red on a baked under eye. It baffles me. Again, moaning about there's no black in the palette, so I'm going to use a little bit of that slate eyeliner just on the kind of outside portion. And then with a little pencil brush, I'm going to grab C2, E2, sorry, and just kind of blend it out with that deepest purple that's in the palette. Just on the outside corner. That's where I like it to be the darkest. Bit of E3. Why not again? Uh, uh, uh. Just along the bottom. And then I was like, need to use a metallic Melissa, bring some fun to this party. 
So in a second, that's what I'm going to do. Can't remember what one it was, so I need to wait. No, I'm going back in with C2. Again, really? Okay. There we go, more C2. Clearly I wasn't happy with how much I had on. There we go, D5. I am wetting this. I'm using my Bosha, don't know how you pronounce that brand, rose water spray. Look at this shade, it's so beautiful. I tried it dry on the other eye first, didn't like it, also falls out everywhere. It's got like chunky glitter in it, which is gorgeous on the eye, but it does fall out everywhere. So just packing that on. I just think it looks so nice. And then C1, it's gonna be my inner corner. I think I did C1 for my inner corner in my volume two video. It's a really pretty shade. Definitely could use this as a face highlighter if you liked chunky glitter in your highlighters. Sorry if you can hear that clicking, it's my, my back. It just clicks horribly. Super Speed Mascara application. I think my uh, lower lashes were getting a bit of a beating. I wanted them to be quite dramatic. Then I'm using my Velour Take It and Go lashes. They are mink, I have said. I didn't know they were mink, didn't realize. But they are now my favorite lashes and I'm gonna wear them until they break. And this is the final look. Look at me posing. Look at my fancy editing. Who am I? It's not even that fancy, is it? But there we are. Posing, I just think my eyes look so blue. Pretty happy with it. Could have been better, but it could have been worse. And I think with a red lippy on. Not too bad. So I clearly finished off all the rest of my makeup. Went with a, a bright red lip because I thought I've done nudes for the past few, have we not? Or did we do pink? I can't remember. Did nude for my last two videos, so red. It's Fenty, if you want to know. So what are my thoughts on Volume three, sorry if you can hear my tummy rumbling. I just ate trying to shut it up. I have to say, I like this palette a thousand times more than volume two so far. At this point right now, I haven't actually swatched it because I always do my swatches in my intro and I do my intro after my outro. So I'm not sure if it swatches as good as number one, but even if it doesn't, I don't really care because putting it on my eyes, I felt like it performed better. I have some patchiness you might have seen in my close-ups of where the yellow is. Um, that's just because I've got quite hooded, creasy eyes and when I don't remove the makeup underneath doing a cut crease, it's just product build-up so it could be smoother but that's just me being too lazy to remove the underneath. Um, I think these shadows went on way better and I also think this yellow is way better than the yellow that was in the previous palette in number two, which is over there. I am not really a neutral kind of gal. If you're a regular on my channel, you'll know that. But this, so you've got my pajamas on down here. Glamorous up top, pajamas on at the bottom. This palette, it does speak to me. I love the bright pops of colour, like this lime up here, this matte lime. I'm really glad that I've got that in my collection because that was one of the shades in volume two that I was like, oh, I quite like that shade. I kind of want to keep the palette. But I didn't want to keep the palette but knowing that I wouldn't really use it. So I'm glad I've got that lime and I really like this pinky red in the middle here. I like, I even like this like kind of horrible green but I like it in the context of this palette. There's just, I feel like this palette is quite, it's got a really lovely colour story. Um, it is quite messy, there was a lot of kick up in a lot of the shades, especially the matte red that I use C2, especially in E2 and E4. The three shimmers, just swatching them on my fingers. I feel like you don't need all three of those. Maybe these two, but this middle one, um, D2, doesn't really need to be there when you've got D5 because they're so similar. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with it. I love this matte purple, <laughs> metallic purple down the bottom here. There's a lot of shades in here that I can really see myself using and liking. I'll 
definitely want to play with this more. It's the kind of palette that has kind of sparked my imagination more, which is weird because this usually doesn't happen to me. Usually I'm like, give me all of the colour, but this, maybe just because in Scotland it's been winter all year pretty much, so this feels like a really appropriate palette for the time of year. But I just, I really like it. I really like it. I think the quality is fab. I've not used the purples in this, so I can't say if they're as good as volume one, but volume one was incredible, and this certainly feels very good. It feels on the same quality-wise as number one, but not quite as good. And I just struggle when I now compare volume one to anything else, because volume one just blew my mind with how good it was, and volume two didn't. I hope I've not got my dinner in my teeth. But this one, I would say, is better so far than Volume 2, although the blues in Volume 2 really did perform super well, so if you're buying it for the blues, then you probably won't be disappointed. But I did feel like the rest of the shades were a bit kind of hit and miss. I'm I'm pleased. I am pleased. I'm, I'm happy with how it performed on my face, and I'm excited to keep playing with it, maybe do some more neutral looks. I always get asked to do them, so I can do some more maybe with this palette. The price point still makes me feel quite ill. Probably the biggest comment in all of my, all of my, my previous two videos about the other two palettes is, holy crap, that is far too expensive or I would never pay that amount of money. Things like that and I agree. I would pay 68 pounds for volume one. I wouldn't pay it for volume two and oh, I would have to swatch this in store before paying £68 for it. But I think if you really, really like this colour story, then I would recommend it. It is really nice. Is it worth £68? Uh, it's hard to say, as always, because that's a horrible amount of money for an eyeshadow palette. But if you've got £68 to spend or a birthday coming up, Christmas isn't that far away, and you really want it, then get it. I don't think you'll be disappointed, but gosh. £68. So that is my thoughts on all three, I guess, of the Norvina palettes. I am as shocked as most of you are that she dropped all three pretty much at the same time. In fact, Jackie's palette as well. It was like four palettes within a month. It all felt a little bit much. At the same time, she's not saying buy them all. She's giving us options, I guess, but it does feel like a bit much and just... They're not cheap palettes, and ABH isn't usually the kind of brand that drops four palettes in like four or five weeks, but there we are. Lots of options to choose from, I guess, and yeah, I am happy. I'm much happier about this than I was about volume two. I feel like this one is just a bit more interesting, and it's not because of the glitter, it's just I feel like it's a more interesting colour story, and I feel like I did a better look with it as well. I'm not sure if you'll agree or not. But anyway, that is enough chatting for me. I still need to go film my intro and do all the swatches and that takes about half an hour. So I am going to go do that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do do me a massive favour and give it a big thumbs up because it really, really helps me out. Also, leave me a comment down below saying anything you want, unless it's mean. Um, because I reply to all of my comments and subscribe because it's just a polite thing to do. And we're only 2,000 off 50k, which is my 2019 goal. So help a girl achieve her goal. I, as always, want to say a massive thank you to my Patreons. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for your support. I don't know if the video of my skin and everything will be up already or not. Um, if it isn't, then it's coming soon, I promise. Um, but thank you so much. Your support in that extra way is mind-boggling. I don't know what I've done to deserve it, I still don't think I do deserve it, but I just want to say a massive thank you. If you do want to become a Patreon and get early access to videos and Patreon only videos, then the link is in the description box. You can join from $1 a month and we also do giveaways as well when we hit milestones over there. But yeah, that is it for me today. I really hope I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye! That is what my heart says